segue into your story. It's a segue into it. How long do you want to do the intro? Tell Brian to give me 15 seconds and type. 15 seconds intro to it, actually. You but segue into it about four minutes after you can film. Brian, give me 15 seconds on a sheet of paper to get into the observatory. Okay. In the middle of this segment, I'll be doing it. Okay. Three minutes Ten, from now. Nine, eight, seven. Just stay there for a moment. Just stay there for a moment. This is a recording. This is a recording. This is a recording. Are you ready? <laughs> Two decades ago, a dozen scientists set up shop in the Okanagan in a deserted valley 15 miles south of Penticton. They manned the Federal Government Radio Observatory at White Lake. Now all their studies and research could be disrupted. Man-made pollution of the airwaves is causing them problems, says Brian Coxwell. The National Research Council of Canada, after a lengthy survey of all parts of Canada, decided that this valley near Penticton was the best area for their research. So they came here away from man's influence and set up their radio telescopes. But things have changed over the years. The Okanagan has become a very popular place to live. And as developers develop, the houses move closer to this site. And it's starting to interfere with their work. A radio telescope consists of a number of very large radio receivers connected to large aerials. They receive radio waves from sources occurring naturally in outer space. But these kinds of man-made inventions interfere with the work at the observatory. They transmit radio waves of a different kind, disrupting the scientific work here. And less than two kilometers from the observatory that was constructed at White Lake two decades ago, more fear that a development here at St. Andrews on the lake will add to the interference. Observatory head man Dr. John Galt is interested in maintaining the status quo. Well, we're doing astronomy, which is studying matter and energy uh, in the sky rather than in a physics laboratory as uh, most physicists do. It's uh, part of pure science. And from a, a layman's point of view, uh, could you tell us what kinds of work you're doing here? We're finding out uh, the way uh, stars behave at the end of their lifetime. A star explosion, for instance, uh, scatters matter out uh, in space and uh, this helps to confirm or change the ideas of, the, of star formation, theories of star formation. Uh, this particular site uh, near Penticton, why was it chosen? It was, what, 20 years ago, roughly? Yes, it was chosen uh, for many reasons. One of the main ones was to be away from man-made interference because the radio signals that we're observing are so faint that uh, we are bothered by things like uh, ignition noise and uh, small radio transmitters and so on. So we uh, chose a site that was only used for grazing, uh, ranchers uh, and uh, other agricultural activities of course don't cause us any trouble. We uh, picked the site in southern BC to get as close to the uh, border so that we can see the southern sky and uh, away from the region around Hudson's Bay where there are aurora, which would bother some of our observations. Unlike an optical telescope through which an astronomer can see the Milky Way with the naked eye, a radio telescope does not form images that can be seen or photographed. But it is a large reflector which collects radio waves from a small part of the sky and reflects them back to a focus. The distance is astronomical thousands of light years away, billions of miles. At the focus, the radio waves are picked up by small aerials, amplified and sent by cable to a laboratory, then further amplified and over a series of days recorded and transformed into images by scientists using a computer. The receiver is complex, employing hundreds of transistors, maps of tiny parts of the sky detailing an explosion of a star 10,000 light years away are plotted and they're studied by scientists like Dr. Tom Landecker at White Lake. This source can be detected with our 25 meter telescope in 10 minutes or so. We can tell that it's there but to see the detail that you can see on this map takes a much longer time. It's taken us 72 days with our synthesis telescope to see 
this detail in here and to be confident that the low level detail is really there. Represents what size in the universe? Well, astronomers measure things in light years. The diameter of this is about 150 light years. Um, on the sky, this, this covers a patch of sky about the same size as the moon, but because it's very, very much more distant, uh, it really is a big piece of, of the Milky Way. I suppose as development moves closer, uh, how's that having an effect? Well, so far, it hasn't had a very much effect on the observations we're taking now. We're more concerned with uh, preserving the site over the next couple of decades, uh, partly because we know that as uh, electronics technology advances, the receivers will become more sensitive, and partly because uh, the first experiments you do are on the strong sources. And then you want to observe weaker sources, which will then be competing more so with the background of interference. This is the development just over the hill from the observatory, and it's the future residents here that could cause the problems for the scientists. But if the people here spend their $35,000 to build their country home, they're going to have to do without microwave ovens, radio transmitters such as CB radios and walkie-talkies, remote control devices, fluorescent lights, dimmer switches, trail bikes, snowmobiles, chainsaws, and they're going to have to push their lawnmower. How would a microwave oven, a, a snowblower, a, a trail bike, or well, one of those? Yes, uh, th those are really, uh, really bad. Microwave ovens in particular are uh, roughly the same frequency range that we're using with this telescope. Uh, actually, the frequency is between the two frequencies that this telescope is using right now. Uh, but the frequency of the microwave oven is not well controlled, and it's liable to splash all over the spectrum. Uh, the radio observatories in England have had dreadful trouble with these, and they have written up their results in two or three British journals so that we are able to benefit by uh, their findings before it really becomes a problem here. If we had them all around the valley, we'd be losing quite a large percentage of our observation time. To build here, the prospective homeowner has to follow in detail the terms of a land use contract that restrict the use of those kinds of man-made inventions that interfere with the work at the White Lake Observatory. But developers argue that the clubhouse of the golf course in this development was actually here before the observatory. If the interference is extremely strong, we'll be able to spot it, throw the records in the wastebasket and observe again the next day. Uh, the, one of the main problems is that it'll be weak interference and it won't get recognized at this early stage and so we'll carry on through the data reduction processes and eventually appear as an artifact on the map that isn't real. There's another side to this argument of man encroaching on the work of scientists in a developing world. It's that if the federal government really cared about protecting the White Lake Observatory, keeping out the interference, it lost its chance several years ago when it turned down an offer to buy up the development land near the radio telescopes. Scientists say they just hope that the land use contracts restricting development can be monitored closely to allow the work to continue for at least another decade.